one thing leads to another. We've worked ourselves. You see people at the gym. I go to the gym. I, I, I put one up on my Instagram the other day, and everyone started yelling. Everyone, oh, my God, you took a picture of a person. I took a picture of the guy from behind. Nobody would have ever recognized the guy. But he literally, Anna, he had his head. You know how you got the, the easy curl machine? You could get there, and, and you put your, your arms, like, on the pad, and, and you do the curls? You know what I'm talking about? Say yes. Yeah. Anna. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So that guy for five minutes, had his head down on the pad, like down, leaning his forehead on the pad. And at first, I was over on the bench press, and I look over, and I go, I wonder if this guy needs help. I wonder if he's <laughs> feeling okay. Is he okay, sir? So I'm looking, right? I'm looking around, and I look, and underneath, underneath, like his head is on the pad, he's got the cell phone down oh. on his lap, <laughs> and he's He's doing a death scroll. You don't know if he's checking his A1Cs. He was doing a death scroll. He was checking his Twitter. By the way, I don't want to, you know, like the guy, apparently some some parent kicked him out of a basement. He couldn't even be bothered to, to comb his hair that morning, from what I can tell. Right? The guy's kicked out of the house. You got to go. You're going to the gym. So now he's at the gym doing what he would have done in the basement. You know, head leaning on the thing to hold his head up because he was too damn lazy to hold his own head up. And he's looking at the phone and he's doing the death scroll. Yeah. I do two more sets. I look over. His head still, is still on the still thing. Still doing it. So now I'm getting angry. This guy's now angering me. It's a place where people come to work out. What if someone else wants to go over and use the, the easy curl machine? Right? They can't because this guy has turned it into his own personal lounge chair. Right? So I do one more set, final set. I look over, he's still there. I walk over to where my phone is. I'm able to get my phone, position myself behind him so that I don't catch his face, and take a video of this guy. Of course, people on Instagram got butt hurt. You don't know what he did. You don't know. Maybe this is his. Maybe he just. No. It, it, he was there for at least seven minutes mm -hmm. without moving. Okay. But, so problem. nobody needed to use the machine he was laying on? Nobody uses a curl machine. We're all men in that gym. We, we, we lift a damn free weights. Even the women are men. We all lift free weights. We like the free weights. So. But at any rate, he found it very comfortable to just sit on that machine and do nothing, right? So I pulled that post down because everyone was getting butt hurt. But I'm looking around going, man, how far we, we, we have outsmarted ourselves. We have completely outsmarted ourselves. We've made life so effing easy that we don't have to do and we don't have to lift a finger, not even a finger. That's why last year, my New Year's resolution for last year was to do at least 365 hours of aerobics. Now, you would say, well, Vinny, you're an exercise guy. You do that anyway. I wasn't training for anything in particular, so I could have sloughed off the aerobics a little bit. I could have slacked off. Now, as, as, as it turns out, I ended up doing in 365 days well into the 400s. I, I reached my goal somewhere around September. I had to re-up my goal and say, okay, 400. And then when I got to 400, I had to say 425 and so on and so forth. I had to make it a goal to have a concerted effort to do at least an hour of aerobics a day. Now, what does that mean? Some days I travel all day. I have in-laws that live in Europe, what have you, not conducive to exercise. I don't have to do an hour a day, but I have to have 365 by the end of the year, which means some days I could do an hour and a half, two hours, whatever, and take another day off, whatever. But at the end of the year, that's what I had to do. And that's what I did. Now, this year came around. And by the way, that aerobics did not, that weightlifting and all that, that's on top of it. And I get it. These are lofty goals, folks. I'm not saying you have to do that. Not even close. But when this year came around, I had to write down all my goals again for this year. That was a goal again. To do at least an hour of aerobics every day. 
throughout the whole year. Um, I can tell you this year it's a little different. We're at day 109 when we record this, mm -hmm. and I'm just ahead of the game by oh, good. six hours. I'm at one. Oh, that's really good. I'm, I've been doing it too, Vinny. Well, we're going to talk about yours. In I a didn't tell you because I was, not that I was scared I wouldn't do it. I you just didn't. was scared that, no, I wasn't, I don't know what it was. I didn't want to tell anybody until I knew I was doing it. You, you know wanted I mean? to like be doing like it I committed to it, but I wanted I didn't even want to say anything to you to the end of the year. I was going to tell you at the end of the year. Well, but now I feel like, like I, I feel secure enough in it that I've got the rhythm down. Well, the first, I, I'll talk the about first it. trimester, like in pregnancy, after the first <laughs> trimester, you start telling people, right? Exactly. The bun, the bun's bacon. So I, I get it. I, I want to ask you about yours in a second. Okay. So I'm at day 109. Last year at this point, I was probably I don't know at 130 hours a day. Mm -hmm. but I'm at 115. I'm just, so you'll go, well, geez, you're not doing as well this year as last year. No, no I don't think anybody's I'm, tracking that. But I think I'm doing you're the only one who would notice. Right. I'm saying that. But okay. I'm doing more weightlifting this year. I'm trying to keep more muscle as I get older. I want to have right more on. muscle in my body. So I'm spending more time lifting weights. So that takes a little bit away from my aerobic activity. Right. Now, is going to be inched up because I'm going to have to take a back seat on the weightlifting for a while because I have to go to Mammoth with um, Cody Cod in you know a couple of weeks in in, a, in five weeks. Wait a minute, hang on. Sorry, folks. For the new people, you'll understand. But every time we say something about Don Coddington, we have to play this. Where is it? It's because he's a rich billionaire, and it's in his contract. It's the billionaire, Don Connington's Friday, 5 o'clock. Have a good weekend. Anyway, my friend Don Connington and I, we we mountain climb together and what have you. And um, so whenever we talk about Don, we play that. That We don't know why. I don't know how I got that, but it, it makes me smile every single time. Anyway, that's coming up in 10 weeks from right now. So I'm spending more time doing aerobics. Today I was at the gym doing the stair machine. Um, on the weekends, I've been going out to the local mountain and going up and down. Even though it's only a three mile up and down, I'm just going up and down as much as I can with a backpack on, with weight in it. That's going to equal the weight I'm going to carry up Mount Whitney. Yeah, these are just things we do. So now for a while, this is called in athletics, this is called periodization. For a period, I'm going to take a little back step from all of the, the weightlifting. I'm going to keep doing weightlifting, but I'm going to start prioritizing the aerobics and not just being on a spinner or the paddle erg or the rowing machine, but on the mountain doing the specific activity that I'm going to do and on the stair machine and what have you. These folks, what I'm telling you is it has to be fluid, right? Right. Whenever people say to me, what's your definition of fitness? I always say fit to do what? Mm. If you came to me and said, Vin, I want to run a marathon within a year, we're not going to spend a lot of time doing squats and leg press, but we will run. If you came to me and said, hey, Vin, I want to enter a weightlifting competition, we're not going to spend a lot of time running. We're going to spend time doing leg press and squats. Mm, okay. Right? If you tell me, you want to be in one of these CrossFit, CrossFit things, I'll grab a bat and beat you over the head and take <laughs> mine. Hey, Vinny, I was thinking I really want to work out really hard until the point where I pee my pants. Can you help me? Yeah, we'll send you to a CrossFit class and you can flip a tire over and over. I wish someone at CrossFit would figure <laughs> out you could just put a tire up on his end and just roll it. You, <laughs> you have a comp competition. You're so mad at CrossFit. It's literally one of my favorite things. <laughs> Look. The problem I have is that these people have been lying to people for years. Right. The people you see on television, the Toomeys of the world, this, you can't be that. Who's Toomey? Is he a CrossFit guy? Oh, no, she. She. Yeah, she, she's an incredible. At, and by the way, the first thing is these top CrossFitters, you have to be an incredible athlete to begin with. Let me not take that away from them. Right. You have to be an incredible athlete. But the pros who they say are not taking drugs, I would say, let me go test them. Okay. Because these people are not on the up and up. 
there's no way that women can carry around and do all the aerobics they do and all the stuff they do and carry around that amount of muscle. Sorry, just not going to happen. Yeah. Sorry. Prove me wrong. Look, I'm the guy who was yelling about Lance Armstrong while you know, in the you know, in the first That's couple true. of years when he was winning. I said, look, he's now in a class of people he wasn't in a couple of years ago. Most of the people he beat have been caught for using drugs and he couldn't beat him a few years ago. Now, all of a sudden, magically after cancer, he's beat. No, you no. better find that George Carlin clip for the end of the show. Oh, the one about Lance Armstrong. Mm -hmm. fuck Lance Armstrong. <laughs> yeah. Fuck his one ball. <laughs> yeah, fuck, and fuck his one ball. <laughs> and, and look, I, I, you know, the thing I love about Lance Armstrong is that um, uh, Live Strong has done more for people with cancer than probably Absolutely. any other organization. I don't have a problem with Lance Armstrong. Uh, I, I like the guy, but I'm just, I, I was the guy telling people early you called on out the truth. Yeah. That, you know, I'm an athlete. I, uh, th the same thing I'm doing with these CrossFit people. I'm telling you, I, I, I'm an exercise physiologist. I'm a nutritionist. I've been doing this for 40 plus years. You, you, you're not going to fool people like me. If I got Fred Hahn on here or, or Ben Bokiki, Ben Bokiki or any of these guys, they would agree with me. Hook, line and sinker. Now, Anna's going to do a Villa Capelli ad while I look up the fuck Lance Armstrong thing <laughs> on YouTube. And then we're going to get into anaerobics, meaning weightlifting and aerobics and what they and both And anaerobics, because and you said you want to talk yeah, about my thing. I want to find out what you're doing. Okay. Uh, Villa Capelli is the best olive oil on the planet. They've been sponsors of this podcast almost since the beginning. Here's what happened. I went to the property in Puglia, Italy, and I watched them make the oil with mine own eyes. And I befriended Paul, the late, great Paul Capelli and his husband, Stephen Crutchfield. And they are not only do they have a place where you can go and do a VRBO or Airbnb and stay at their amazing place. They make oil, which they then ship to us and then uh, we can buy it. Um, when you go to Italy, the oil is very different because it's very pure. They don't cut it. Paul was the first one to tell me that you can cut olive oil with other oils, that it's legal. The FDA looks the other way, or it's just allowed to be cut with a certain amount of oils. And they do. They cut them with seed oils, the cheaper oils. So if you see a really cheap, inexpensive, I should say, an inexpensive olive oil on the shelf at your grocery store, or it's marked light olive oil or... Um, what is it? The clean, clean olive oil. Like they use natural olive oil. They use all these they, words. They can say first press. They can say extra virgin. They can say whatever they, can say whatever they, they want. want. They yeah. can also put chlorophyll in there to color it. They can cut it with cheaper seed oils, which we've now learned are completely toxic. The sunflower, safflower, um, soybean, corn, uh, canola. Uh, what's the last one? Uh, did you say you said cotton seed? Cotton seed. Yeah. They, they could cut it so, with anything. Yes. So we've we've since learned that they've been cutting it. So when you have pure extra virgin olive oil, it's a taste sensation. Let me tell you. The other thing that's been happening uh, that's happened about twenty years ago, maybe longer, was the uh, grapeseed oil people. That's another seed oil, by the way. The grapeseed oil people got this big PR campaign going about olive oil, about the smoke point of olive oil, which never made any sense because if you never cook, made sense, you realize that what they were telling you was a lie. Right. It was a lie. There's a, you're, you're not going to, you're not eating a carcinogen. If you fry things in olive oil, I'm talking about pan frying. Don't deep fry things in olive oil because olive oil is expensive and that's a waste of olive oil. Yeah. Um, so olive oil is literally nature's gold. It has been for millennia and, uh, you want to get your hands on some, especially the, the good stuff made on those old trees in Italy. They harvest Coratina olives early. They have the Puglia pinch. It has a little peppery finish to it. Not like black pepper. It just has this pepper finish. It's so incredibly delicious and so flavorful. And you need to get your hands on some. Villa Capelli olive oil started becoming a sponsor of this podcast because they heard us drinking it and talking about it on the air. And Paul Capelli said, I got to give you guys money because this is amazing. And I was like, well, it is. And thank you. And we, so need, money they, because we're, and we need money, frankly. Yeah, because yeah. it ain't cheap to produce a podcast, especially for oh. 11 plus years. I remember the early days, Anna, when we, you know, like just what it costs just to host it and the whole thing. Oh, to host it, to edit and, it, all the people to pay to do the things. Yeah, we just assumed, oh, we're going to shut this down in five minutes. And oh, yeah, this is way too labor intensive. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. way too much sweat equity to start a podcast. We'll do another ad about not starting a podcast in a minute. 
But uh, if you want to get your hands on some Villa Capelli, go to villacapelli.com. Capelli is spelled with two P's and two L's. C-A-P-P-E-L-L-I. Villacapelli.com. And use the discount code VINNI, V-I-N-N-I-E. You'll get 10% off your order each and every time. We always suggest that you go up to the price range of 145, 150 bucks, because when you use the discount code VINNI, it knocks it down, but you still get the free shipping. It's very expensive to ship oil because it's heavy AF. Yeah. So um, we recommend that. And then I don't know if the oil is all back in stock by the time this podcast airs on Monday. So here's what you do. Go to villacapelli.com, look up the three liter tin or the 750 milliliter bottle, whatever it is. Put your email in the the thing that says, you know, note to be notified, put your email here, put your email in. Because what'll happen is the moment that Steven marks that stuff back in stock, you'll get an email and that's your chance. Go get it. And, and pounds, trust us. When I say pounds, pounds. Yes. So grab yours. It's going to be amazing. I cannot wait for it to come back. So I'm going to be doing the same thing. My email is entered well, as well. I, I'm still up probably four liters. Okay. I still have like four liters. You're here. making the rest of us feel bad. Yeah. No, no. I, I'm shaming you guys. I'm I'm oil shaming you right <laughs> for now. For not getting on it. Before Vinny we is Anna, the discount code. V-I-N-N-I-E. 10% off. Okay. Before we find out about Anna, let's just run this because this is worth it. Here we go. <laughs> now, since yeah, that, so that good. never stops. That he opened that whole act with that, which is just yeah. It was brilliant. He's yeah, the, just, the guy brilliant. Was just beyond beyond. Mm -hmm. And uh, all right. So Anna, you, you've been pregnant for four months now with this information that you've right. been back. Mm -hmm. So um, we're on day 109. And Anna, uh, look, Anna never runs late for the podcast. She was six minutes late. That's right. And she says, I apologize, but I had to finish my routine. That's right my exercise routine. I was like, Anna, if that's why you were late, I will accept that. So go on, Anna, explain what you were <laughs> Love doing. It like you're my teacher. <laughs> yeah, I will accept that excuse. Okay. For lateness. <laughs> yeah, you tardy. By the way, do you know that you and I are the only ones who really care about being late or not? You know that, right? I know. Now it's like a thing, right? I don't well, know. Today I was, I was asked to do an interview for a show that I will not name. They had to do a pre-interview for half an hour last week this you know get on the thing at 9 15 well right. by 10 35 nothing had started they were having tech problems and they never acknowledged that the two guests are sitting there and then i was finally like i have to go i have a hard out i can't start your show they figured it out i was like i have to go i'm sorry i've been sitting here for an, and no one's acknowledged my presence and like it was just so weird to to have nothing be acknowledged i you and i would keel over dead with embarrassment and shame if we treated any one of our guests like that listen i walk out of i've walked out of doctor's offices and appointments and if i'm there for more than five minutes past my appointment time and i'm still sitting in the waiting room i'll just go i'll, I'll tell the receptionist um thank you i'm leaving now and they go w what's going on it's like my appointment was at nine it's 905 and um it's like, but the doctor's running late, and I always tell them the same thing. There's an office full of people here to make sure that everything runs smoothly. Right. 
and you we'll guys book your appointments that way you can't pull that you, you, you he's behind already thank you i'm, I'm good by and the way, that's why I always book the first appointment of the day with every single service provider. But it doesn't I, matter. You could be the first one in. And that's what if well, that's true. There's sometimes the I get there before already. You're, mm -hmm. It's like if you're off, I feel sorry for the guy coming in at three o'clock. You're going to be oh, three no, forget off. it. You know, and usually when I say that, they pull me in right away. Oh, come on back. Just come on back. Right. That's funny. But then yeah. you just sit in the back and wait. Yeah, but I've walked out of there. I've done that where that, you know, you. Let, let's appease the asshole. Let's get the asshole and bring him in the back. And, you know, let, let's, you know, start doing. And by stuff. the way, you're the asshole because they're late, but you, you were like, right. I'm going to, I'm going to go. Now. If I sit there for more than five or so minutes, I, I, that's it. It's like, look, I, I'm, I'm busy. You're providing a service. I came to you. You right. can't provide that service. I'm with you. you need to go. Oh, have you done the thing where you get there first and then you're waiting on the doctor? You're like the doctor will be here soon. There's traffic. I was like, oh, did I not just get in a car and drive here and get here on time? Does the doctor not know how long it takes for them to get to their own office? I'll never forget. Um, I was going to Andy Schreiber's house in Beverly Hills for a meeting. This was years ago. And I'm going to mention a woman's first name. Um, this woman, Nina, was going to mention, but was going to meet us there for the meeting. And um, I was on a 101, and it was one of those rare times where I'm moving along at 60 miles an hour on the 101. And Andy goes, "Where are you?" I said, "I'm going to be there probably 10 minutes early." Andy, I mean, the, the, you know, there's no traffic. He goes, "Well, Nina says she's going to be a half an hour late. Um, she's in Woodland Hills." And she, there, there's stop traffic. You're like, I said, I, live? I just, I just left Calabasas. I just mm -hmm. drove completely through Woodland Hills. I said, I just passed Sherman Oaks and mm -hmm. I'm doing 60 and telling you that I'm getting there 10 minutes early. Nina just lied to you. I hate when people use the traffic excuse. It makes no sense. At any rate. Anyway, this is a little insight into me and Vinny's personality. Vinny yeah. and my personality. Um, okay, so here's what. I loved last year that you did the 365 days of cardio. Right. To be fair, I do 30 to 45 minutes almost every day. So I didn't think it would be such a big jump. And it technically wasn't, but it also was. Okay? Explain. Because... because I wanted to make sure that I'm able to fit it all in. You know, when you're self-employed or employed, it doesn't matter what level of employment, when you're working, when you're busy, when you're raising kids, when you're doing whatever, you your day can get away from you because you've gone from like, oh, I scheduled out my whole day to all this shit came up and I've got to address it. So being able to stop the madness and go, you know what? I still need to get 20 more minutes. I'm going to go jump on the bike or I'm going to go run up the hill. You know, being able to do that has been an interesting boundary thing. Draw, and I'm super into drawing boundaries these days because apparently the boundaries are going to save us. <laughs> that's that's what I've come to do. I, I'm a person who has said yes to too much over the years, like saying yes to you to do your podcast. But yeah. it, <laughs> right. Am I wrong? And here we are. <laughs> and here we are. Eleven years later. Still can't say no. Um, I always blame you for hog tying me. But really, honestly, I just was like, I can't say no to this guy. I got to do this podcast. So um, and by the way. For those of you who don't know me, it's the best decision I've ever made. I'm not, I'm giving Vinny shit, but also I don't like saying that either because then I'm giving him too much power. Okay. Anyway, so wow, <laughs> wow a lot just was revealed. There. That was a trip. Secrets revealed. Yeah. Um, so I decided to do this, and then I was like, "Holy crap! You cannot skip a day. Right. If it's pouring down rain outside and freezing." And you don't have a way, a gym to go to or a bike, like I have the bike in the barn. Or if you're traveling, if you're traveling all day, you better do extra walks around the airport. Because if you skip a day, you're basically saying like, oh, I could do five extra minutes for the next, what, however many, 20 days. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or whatever that works. But if another day comes in now. But if you, another day comes, no, right. you cannot, you can't do it. Right. So I was like, oh, this is interesting. So I think that I thought I was doing 30 to 45 minutes, six days a week, but I don't think I was. 
because I think days run into each other and you forget and let, until you really track it and look at it. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not counting today because I did 30 minutes on the bike and I know that I will do a 30 minute walk uh, in the evening. And by the way, obviously summer is great because then you can push it till later. That was the other thing back in January. I had to make sure I got it in early because it's going to get dark. So Anna, right. let, let's do count today. So, so we're on day 109. So no, I'm not counting today because I haven't finished today. So that's not fair. Okay, so all right. as of day 108. Okay, I am ahead by approximately uh, 63 minutes. So you're at that's a slim one, margin. You're at 109. Yeah. So I'm at 109 on day 108. See, what I do is some days I don't do aerobics at all. Um, right. I'm not I, there yet because I don't want to do two hours of aerobics the next day. You see, I I'll, I'll go hiking. You know, I'll, I'll go up and down the mountain three times on, on a Saturday and that'll be mm. five hours. So right. if I, you know, um, if you know, I like, have time, I, but that's like maybe once every six weeks, I can do like a two to three hour hike. The next 200 days of this, the next 100 day of, days of this year to get me to 200. Yeah. It's going to inch up a lot because I'm going to be doing a lot more aerobics because right. of what I'm getting ready to do. And then it's going to ease back again. Right. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to, you know, periodization, I'm going to go back into more weightlifting. Um, and look, when you look at what the Eastern Bloc countries were doing way back when, um, we learned that from them. They weren't just doing plyometrics, but they, they would do things like, you know, long, slow distance for a while and then plyometrics, which mm -hmm. worked on a, a different part of you know, the body and the way it worked and, you know, just fast twitch muscle. And then they would do weightlifting for a while. And each one of these periods would last somewhere between 16 and 20 weeks. Right. And they were just building a more well-rounded machine. And when you started doing something else, it wasn't like you stopped doing the plyometrics or you stopped doing right. aerobics. It just took a back seat. You sure. did sub it and then prioritize something else. And that seems to work very well. well. Can I tell you what I've discovered about like it kind of because whenever you make a commitment, I love doing commitments and challenges, especially a year long one. Because it really does kind of like awaken these new things with it, you discover new things about yourself, which is always right. a good thing, right? Yeah. I, you should always be challenging yourself. Ugh, hormetic stress, right? I read about that. Um, you should always be challenging yourself so that you grow and you're not like dying on the vine. Literally, I'm getting to the age where I could just let it all die on the vine. And I don't want to do that. Yeah. So I've noticed getting the 60 minutes a day is not a problem. Not a problem at all. I have that. I have that kind of lifestyle. I can bake that in. I can make myself do it. I can postpone dinner till later because I got to finish this thing or I can go for a thing after. You know what I mean? Like I don't have a problem fitting it in. Right. It's the missing a day and knowing that I've got to make up extra time. I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. So do it today. Do not use right. anything, even weather, traveling, Whatever it is, do not use it as an excuse. Now, I did start the cold plunge beginning of March, right? And that I did stop while I was in Italy and then just started the first morning back and have been still doing that every day since. So I love the cold plunge. That's another thing where I'm like, I can't even imagine starting my morning without that. Yeah. Um, and by the way, I listened to an interview with, uh, I mean, a thing by Andrew Huberman, who was like, have your coffee first and then do your cold plunge. And I am a huge fan of that. It like makes the caffeine go to all the parts of your body. You're like, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Don't fuck with me. And then they do fuck with you, by the way. Yeah. It doesn't make your day less full of bullshit, but maybe it makes you a little calmer and ready to like Tai Chi it a little bit, I guess. I don't know. But um, I like the high too from doing the cardio earlier in the day. Right. But I also like walking after dinner and moving my body after dinner. So I don't even know. I, I don't know what the if there's an ideal time of day, you're going to start to talk about exercise, cardio, weights, and I'm still doing weight training. But I've noticed if I only have one thing to do that day, I've committed to the cardio. So I do want to get back into like, that's going to be the next phase is working back in more weight training. Like I've done oh. arms twice this week and legs once and that's it. And it's Thursday. All right, we're going to start with weight training. Okay. Um, why is it important? Well, um, our body is a use it or lose it proposition. Weight training is, is, is by and large, um, anaerobic, meaning you're not using oxygen while you're doing the exercise itself, right? So you're working a muscle, you're 
doing X amount of reps. And um, you're building, you're causing the muscles to grow, you're causing the tendons, the muscles, the soft tissue, the heart tissue, your bones, everything, you're stressing your body, and your body will grow. Um, so what are the most important weightlifting exercises? So what comes to mind? Well, there are two types of movements. And you don't have to know a lot about weightlifting. I'm going to put this in, in a way that anyone can understand. It. And Anna, if I get too technical, stop me and tell me to go back and explain it. Okay. <clears throat> Compound movements are the natural movements of your body, where you're moving more than one joint. I'm going to start with legs. If you're doing a squat, or a lunge or a leg press, you're working your hip, your knee and your ankle, you're moving three joints, right to press the weight away from you, whether it's a squat, a lunge or a leg press. The same can be said for a deadlift. All of these are compound movements, you're moving the biggest muscles in a synergistic way, they're all working in concert. The bodybuilding style exercises when you do like a leg extension, that's why you're sitting and you're kicking your leg up. You're just working your you're basically stabilizing everything else and you're concentrating just on your quadriceps, which are a bunch of hip flexor muscles that end up at your knee. Um, so now you're working it in a different way. If you want to be a bodybuilder, that might be worthwhile doing. Um, if you're going to do the leg extension, you also want to do a leg curl where you're working the, the femur bicep, the bicep femoris, so it's the back of your legs, the hamstrings. These are not necessary exercises to get your legs in shape. They're exercises that are meant as supplemental exercises, and you don't even have to do them. Um, and then finally, the leg is not complete unless you're doing um, calf raises or heel raises, you call them either thing. Now there are two ways to do calf raises, Anna, you can have your legs straight when you're doing them, and you're just working your foot, or they have these machines where you're you're bent at the knee, and then the pad is across the top of your your quadriceps, and you push up. They're both working different parts of the calf, whether your leg is bent or your leg is straight. Um, I will cover this. I'm working on a thing, folks. This is going to ask you. Yeah, I'm working on a thing where I'm going to video and it's going to be free on my YouTube and it'll probably be free on my vinnytotteries.com also, where I will show each pertinent exercise that you should be doing in the gym. I will show you what the exercise is, what it's called, and here's how you do it. And then if you want to sign up for one of the programs, I will have a beginner, intermediate, advanced, and then I'm going to have workouts for, hey, you only have two days a week, you only have three days a week, whatever you have, I will have a workout plan for you. That's what I did my entire career was write workouts for actors and actresses and people in Hollywood. I'm going to give you guys those same sort of workouts. It's going to all be there for you. Okay. Um, but I don't have that put together yet, because I'm busy writing another movie, but it's coming. Um, but those are the main leg exercises. How many reps and sets? This is always interesting, because I'm broadcasting. That means I'm casting a net very broadly to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Some people are in pretty good shape. Other people are couch potatoes. I don't know who you are. I cannot give you a rep and set amount right here. But I'm gonna give you a general way to think about it. If you are just starting out, you want to use a weight on the leg press on the squats or in any is any of these exercises, where you can easily do 15 reps, meaning when you get to 15 reps, you could have done another five. And then um, you want to do that, uh, you want to do that, you know, two or three sets, no more than three sets, do that for a few weeks. And once you're sure that all the, the skids are greased, and, and you're not going to hurt anything, you can start adding a little more weight. And instead of doing 15 reps, you get it down to 12 reps. And if that's working, we'll get it down to 10 reps where you're adding more and more weight. But that's down the road. 
This is not a prescription. I'm just saying that if any, if you go to any trainer and he starts you off on seven or eight reps or six reps and his heavy weight, just because he wants to prove to you how much you're out of shape, fire that trainer that day. That's not a good trainer. Mm -hmm. There are more bad trainers than good trainers, period. As a matter of fact, I go as far as to say 95% of all trainers suck. They suck. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. You got to find that 5%. Or you can just listen to this podcast. I'll keep giving you clues. Or whenever I get those things up there, we'll, we'll get that going. Um, upper body. You have two things you can do with your upper body. You can pull things and you can push things. That's it. That is it. You can push things away from your body. Things like bench press, shoulder press, incline bench press. And you can pull things towards your body. Lat pulls, pull-ups, rowing, dumbbell rows, what have you. These are all compound movements. Now you might say, well, Vinny, what about tricep extensions and curls? Again, bodybuilding exercises, and I get it. People like to do those because, let's face it, we're Americans. We like our guns. Everybody wants to go to a gun show. Everybody wants to have... Guys want to have the big vein coming out of their bicep, and women don't want to have the bingo flaps on their arms. We got to keep our we got to keep our shoulders and, and arms tight and fit. If you want to add those exercises, that's fine. Again, this is not a complete prescription, but this is how you do it. Anna, did I explain all of that? Yeah, that was great. So, what part of the body did I leave out? Um, can I, can I use, um, a word? Go on. The core. Yeah. Abs. So there's only one way to work your abs. Now you could go watch all these people on YouTube and they're showing you all different ways to do it. And that's all fine. But the main thing is you want to protect your lower back. And some of these exercises I see these YouTubers doing, um, it's good for them because they're young and healthy and very strong and they can get away with it. But for you, it might cause all kinds of problems. So a couple of things you can do, regular good old fashioned military style sit ups. If you go to a gym, you can use basically you want to flex your rectus abdominis, that's the, the six pack in the front of your stomach. If you want to work your obliques, that's a whole different thing. Um, but to work the entire core, meaning everything around the waist area between your nipples and your hips, you your have nipples to, and your hipples, folks. Yeah, that you want to be between nipples and hips. My new band, nipples and hips. Yeah. Um, you could do things like planks and side planks, and you know, well, I can't hold the plank more than eight seconds. Then fine, that's where you're starting. You have to start using your muscles, or you're going to lose your muscles. Once you hit around 35 years old, there's something called sarcopenia gets in there. If you ask a lot of doctors. They'll tell you that once you have sarcopenia, there's not a whole hell of a lot you could do about it, but they're wrong. They're wrong. You can keep your body going by exercising. You can keep your muscles going. And look, when you start working out and you start building more lean muscle mass, if you're a guy, your body's going to make more testosterone naturally, right? You're going to feel healthier. You're going to feel stronger. You're going to feel good. Everything's going to feel better, right? So it's not just important to lose the weight through diet. You want to put lean muscle on because that's indicative of someone who's going to be healthy for a long time. Can I say something about that too? Being sure. a woman of a certain age, turning a certain age in a matter of days. Mm -hmm. um, so I was diagnosed with osteopenia at age 28 when they diagnosed the celiac. They did a DEXA scan and they were like, oh girl, you are one step. You have the bones of a 70 year old woman. You're 28 years old. Um. Whether or not I'm rebuilding any of that stuff, it's very important for me to do weight bearing. I'm not weight bearing, like I said, but weightlifting right. to keep the bones strong because it's only <laughs> it can only go downhill from there. And when once the estrogen is then gone, it's those stories of like women who bend over to tie their shoe and they break a hip. No joke. It's not like they're doing something crazy. They didn't fall. They just haven't been lifting weights. Let me say a little more about that. When you're it's, working, that scares muscles, the shit out of me. Yeah. You're not just working your muscles, you're working the soft tissues, your tendons, your ligaments, and everything else. 
and you're also helping your bones to become strong. Um, Anna um, said something I want to make sure whenever I do these, I want to make sure there's a term, it's called weight bearing. Weight bearing and weight lifting are two different things. Thank you for clarifying. I've learned the distinction from you. Yeah, because I'm smart. Yeah. Um, weight bearing exercise is when you you know, we're, we're bipods, you know, we walk on up. The reason bears generally don't attack us when they see us and they see us all the time out when we're hiking in the forest and everything. We already look like we're in a position where we can attack. We're already up on on twos, right? We're walking upright on, on our feet. You're bearing the weight of your frame. We're, that's weight bearing, just standing, walking, jogging, jumping rope, anywhere where you're on your feet, that's weight bearing exercise. That's a good thing. The more weight bearing exercise you have, meaning walking, hiking, jogging, running, uh, aerobics, stair machine, elliptical machine, anything like that, the more of that that you do, the stronger you will make your soft tissue, the more dense you will make your bones. That's a fact. Um, let's go back to our dear friend Lance Armstrong. If you look at cyclists, and you see the you see their quads, and you go, my God, look at those quads. They're so bulbous, and there's so much muscle in their quads. They've taken x rays of professional cyclists with the big bulbous quads, next to professional marathoners with their little skinny. Quads. <laughs> right. The marathoners, their bones were like big oak trees compared to the cyclists that look like they had bones that belong to a fish. The reason being is, when you're perched up on a seat, and you're, you know, spinning that bike all day long, yeah, you're building some big quads. But you're drawing calcium, you're drawing magnesium from your bones. So you bone and you're not pounding on your bones. So your bones get weaker and weaker and weaker. That's why sometimes when these cyclists hit the ground, you go, Oh, he didn't even hit the ground that hard. They break a hip, they break a mm. femur, they break everything because those bones That's are shocking. Already thin. Yeah. Right. This happens all the time. And look, I'm a big proponent of cycling, but I, I tell everyone if you're a big time cyclist and there was a time you guys don't know me very well if you're new to this podcast, but I would spend 15 to 17,000 miles a year on a bike when I was training for these ultra events. And I would make sure that some of my training was jumping rope, running, doing other things to keep my bones strong, because man, you are, you are wasting away in the bone department. If you're, you know, we always hear about, oh, yeah, I know this woman, she's 80 years old, she swims two miles every morning, she's suspended in water. And you, by the way, if you think mm -hmm. taking extra calcium is going to help you no, extra taking some extra magnesium will help you you get enough calcium automatically, you need the magnesium and vitamin D to go with the calcium whole different story. How mag D? You always hear about these women. Um, I don't know why women mostly women they swim two miles a day. I mean, mm -hmm. you never hear too many men. That's a it. lot of swimming. That's a lot of swimming. Oh, yeah, she's in the pool two miles every morning. And, and then they fall and break their hip. Right? It's, you know, yeah, you don't have to break your hip when you fall, folks, it doesn't have to be that way. Right? You know, we, we used to bounce when we were younger, you want to get back to that weight bearing exercises, with, we're going to get you that cycling, although a great sport swimming great sport, go do something else. Also, even if it's gardening, be on your feet. Uh, I don't know if it's you can almost like cross training. Yeah, right? it, it is not CrossFit right. cross training, <laughs> you might see it from here. But right next to those rubber bands in my rack, I have two jump ropes hanging behind there. And I also have some over on my patio. See, wow, Vin, you have a lot of jump ropes. Yeah, whenever I pass the jump rope, I'll grab it and just spin it for five minutes. It makes a big difference. And by the way, I don't even count that as part of my aerobics. I just do it for my bones. So you could do that kind of stuff. Um, but that's weightlifting 101. Now, here's the deal. Aerobics, we talked about that. It's important. There was a time in this country where people did 12 hours of aerobics a day. And now when you tell people to do seven hours a week, they go, hey, what do you think I am? I got a family, I got this, that and the other thing. You can't afford not to. Yeah. Um, 
I always say that exercise is a poor way to lose weight. But let me add this to that. Because you can't outrun a bad diet. If you're eating optimally, if you're eating low carb, NSNG, paleo, Atkins, the right way, not eating all the crap in Atkins. If you're eating low carb and you're exercising, now you can magnify the effects of weight loss. You can lose Ooh, weight. That's good. You will not outrun a bad diet. You can't outrun a fork. No one's ever done it. You're saying boat can't outrun a fork. You know, it's great that you say that because yeah, you're, you're right. You can't afford not to. And I will say this, a couple of things. First of all, when people start NSNG, sometimes it's going to require all of your focus just to do NSNG correctly. Right. And it's okay if you're like, I literally, because decision fatigue is real. Yeah. Figuring out a new way of living your life and you're shifting paradigms here. You're like, oh, I'm going to have to learn how to cook and do, do that first. Do that first. Start dropping some weight. Start feeling good in your own skin again. Start getting confident in this thing working and understanding that like you're feeding yourself real food. Things are changing. Your body's healing. A bunch of stuff's going to happen for the positive. So don't try to go, well, now I have to go run my hour. I have to go run for an hour straight, 60 days in a row. Don't do that if you're just starting. Like get the NSNG under your belt first. Right. And then I promise you, a thing is going to happen with your body where, and this happens again and again. People are like, I hate working out. I don't like working out. I'm not an exerciser. I don't like working out, whatever. That's good for you, Vinny, but I don't like working out. All of a sudden our human nature kicks in where you're like, Oh, I got this body. I want to move it. Yeah. And something happens where you're like, you can't help but feel energized and want to move your body and want to exercise and want to schedule the time. I'm telling you, it's a very subtle shift, but you'll look back one day and be like, Oh my God. And, and that's also proven in the people who are like, Oh, I'm going to go do it. Like Scott King training for an Ironman and people becoming triathletes and people do, doing all this stuff. And it doesn't even have to be that. It can be like, I went back to ballet class for the first time in 20 oh, really? years or what, well, I did that a few years ago, but like things, but we hear things like that from people, like whatever it is that you used to love to do and move your body. Oh, I joined the, you know, the ad hoc soccer team at the, that meets at the park Sunday morning. Great. Like you'll find yourself all of a sudden wanting to do things. It's very strange that you were like, I never wanted to do that. I never I could yeah. be bothered to get up and go do that. And then you're like, but do the NSNG thing first. I think, wouldn't you say? Yeah, well, yeah. And look, I've had people that have come to me and they were lifetime smokers. And they'll mm. say, I, I guess I got to stop the smoking too. And I'm like, yeah, but we're not going to talk about that right now. Get, let's get this going. Let's talk about smoking in a couple of weeks. And they go, wow, you're pretty lenient about that. I was like, well, I want you to succeed at something. Right. You've been smoking since you're 13 and you're 50. You know, that nail has already been dr driven into that coffin. Let's, you know, give me a couple of weeks. And then we can start talking about smoking. We can figure out ways to get you off of that. Right. One step at a time. Because mm -hmm. when you, and, and by the way, some people are like type A and they go, I, I need to do it all right now. I'm doing it all. And they'll rip the band aid off and stop smoking and do this and do that. And I've seen that succeed too, but not, not always. You know, right. one thing at a time and then you mm -hmm. get it going. So just start eating right, folks. Um, you might notice on the rack behind me, I got my TRX straps up there. Well, I was uh, going to ask you about TRX, yoga, Pilates, the other yeah, stuff, it, it, the other classes. All, it, it all. It, the spin uh, class, the P Peloton, the all the things. Is there anything in particular you like, don't like? Yeah, I, look, I like using TRX. Um, it's a form of resistance, right? It is. It, it's, it's, you know, you're using your body weight to do, you know, the weights. Right. You, you know, when you get those things, it's a it's an inexpensive way. You you can't afford a gym. Maybe you have kids at home. Uh, I was talking to a woman today, a uh, very lovely woman. Her 20 year old son uh, is severely handicapped. So she's at home with him all day, all mm -hmm. the time. She has to turn him over and everything. We had to talk about things she could do in the home. This is right. one of my consults today. Right. Um, so, yeah, you know, TRX might be you might have young kids at home, you just get a bar to hang it on and get the, get the TRX straps. And you could do all those same movements using your body weight. Um, <clears throat> uh, Serena likes to go to a place called solid core, right? Um, which is which um, we discussed on an upcoming 
yeah. on an oh. upcoming episode. We don't know what it's you guys talk about it. Yeah, we, did. we talked about it at length. Yeah, it's going to mm-hmm. probably come out next week. It's it's kind of a it, I've been with her because I wanted to check it out. It's kind of a bastardized version of Pilates. Right. But you know what? It's it goes back to my old saying, which exercise should you do? It's the one you are willing to do. She right. likes to be around other people. She likes going to class. There's, you know, gay disco music. You like, mm-hmm. it's a party. Yeah, it's a party. And she goes and she goes like, I, I, I don't want to you talk to her maybe four days a week, five days a week. And I got to tell her, it's changed. It, it's changed her body. Yeah. And it's this working. Woman who was able to run 100 miles. Right. Right. Um, and apparently her is it a labrum tear is like uh, either gone or just not bothering her anymore. She I never hear her complaining about anything. And she goes to that class. I want to say minimum four days a week, if not yeah. five. Mm-hmm. And um, which, by the way, I would ask you to, is the, like because you always say take a day off because that's a full body. They do your whole body. Yeah. 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 I mean, I know they change the exercises up, but they're doing the whole body. But is that okay? Because remember when I did the planking challenge a couple of years ago and you were like, yeah. you need to take a break. Just she one day off. Break, like, so I was like, I can't she, take a break. I'll goes, never do it again. She goes one or two days, she take a day off and then she'll go another okay. day, take a day off. That's what I'm saying is three or four days a week. Yeah. So out of seven days, there's days in between there where she doesn't right. go. And there are different classes where they do different things. Sure. It's not always the same thing. So she'll go, oh, I'm going to Mary's class because she does the blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to Johnny's class right. because he works more. So they move it around. Right. And at 61, she she's getting the body back that she had when I met her before she became this crazed, you know, runner. Mm-hmm. Folks, Serena met me and she saw me doing ultras on bikes. And she was running at the time. She was doing half marathons. She wanted to know if there was ultras for runners. And I explained that, yeah, those are bigger than bike ultras. And then she went into this spiral of doing mm-hmm. 50Ks and 100Ks and 85 milers and 100 milers. And I watched her body just go down. I mean, her butt got flat. I mean, she was lean. If lean is the, you know, the right. want, she was skinny and lean, but she had that runner's body. And she had lost baby didn't have much back anymore. Mm. You know, and the abs weren't the way they were. But she was again, lean. Yeah. But she was losing a lot of musculature because she couldn't do anything else because she was always running. Right. She was always doing one thing. And that only works until it doesn't work anymore. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, the thing that does work in all of our lives is the powders and the sauces over at Eat Happy Kitchen. <gasps> Oh, oh my God. God. Let me tell you what I'm doing with your stuff now. Oh, I love it. Tell me. Of course, you know, I like a lot of extra salt. So when I boil my eggs in the morning, I will put a little salt on them and then mm-hmm. I'll, I'll put the uh, barbecue right there, right there. Just hit the barbecue. Right there? Boom. Mm-hmm. Just throw it at it. I love it. Um, it's I love all, all of it. Counter, it's everywhere. By the time I get to the third egg, I'm just rolling the egg around the counter to pick it up. You know? I can't believe you haven't put the dill on your eggs. I have. I have. And you're just I, obsessed with the barbecue dust. I, I am. Your barbecue dust and it's your really good. taco dust is my thing. Let me ask you this. So we we sell the canisters direct to consumers so we can you guys can have, you know, a bigger right. portion, right? Yeah. For grocery, that's not going to work. So for those yeah. of you who don't know, I have eathappykitchen.com and I I have five flavors of pasta sauce that are all recipes from my cookbooks. Obviously, I don't eat pasta, but they're called pasta sauce in the grocery store world. Um, I ha- And then I have three spice blends that are also based on my recipes. I don't you don't have to buy any of my products. You can get the recipes and make them from my cookbooks forever ad nauseum for the rest of eternity. But I wanted to have something on the grocery store shelves that I was not finding. Like, for example, at my local Whole Foods, the um, taco seasoning that's in the packets either has cornstarch, dates, sugar, maltodextrin, yeah. brown rice hulls, tapioca starch, you name it. It's got all, and the, the three that they have all have crap in them and they're all organic. Okay. So wrap yeah. your brain around that one. Yeah. So no, it's, it's, it's crazy. You it's cannot crazy. find good stuff. There's a thing that I do too, that I, I, I do this crazy thing, which is called full disclosure. I list every ingredient. So you know how you'll read ingredients for something and it'll be like, you know, this, that, the other thing, spices and they they say spices so that people can't steal the formula 
And who knows, maybe one day I'll be knocked off and I'll really resent it. And I'll be really pissed off because people, but by the way, you could just also get the recipe in the cookbook. By the way, I, I figured out how to scale it up. It's not like, you know what I'm saying? Huh. Um, but I list everything that's in there and I don't put anything in there that's not listed on the back. So I, we've been coming up with these new packagings, these individual packets, right? Cause yes, what most people like to buy their taco seasoning and an individual thing and put a thing and the ranch seasoning and an individual thing. Would you, if you knew that this was a dust that you like, would you buy like a packet, a bunch of, of individual barbecue dust packets? That's the conversation that we're having right now with the uh, distributors and the buyers. Um, cause the canisters I don't work on grocery store shelves cause nobody knows what it is. Cause you can't see the product. Okay, how much Packets product comes know. in the packet? It would be two tablespoons, just like two tablespoons in every, like a serving for the, you know what I mean? So you just rip it open, put it on your thing. So I kind of feel like I wish we could, find, obviously I would love to find a bulk thing, but we're not there yet. We're not to the bulk land. Maybe if Costco comes and knocking, we'll figure out bulk packaging, but we're not there. If that's what everyone, Anna, you know, I'm, you know, whenever they ask politicians, how much does a box of cereal cost? And <laughs> oh, I don't know how much a box of cereal costs. You know so. what I mean? Like they try to throw politicians on how much right. is a gallon of milk? And they go, I don't know. I don't do that kind of shopping. I, right. you know what I mean? I just go to the meat department. I get fish. I get meat. I know where the eggs are. I know where the dairy is and I'm out. Gina Grad had me going around looking for candy in the store and this and that. I, I've got something called Tutino's pizza rolls. I did not know that those products existed. Gross. It, it was horrible. I had to eat one on the air. I stopped. We stopped doing that on, because I just couldn't. Do I don't think you should do that. I, I went there. I went to. I mean, it's funny, but not at the cost of your it body. Wasn't good. I, I, I um, well, uh, the only reason I ask is only. I don't the barbecue know, I don't know what people we're want. We're definitely going to do single serving packet for this is, by the way, just for grocery. We will still always have the canisters because I just want to have larger portions available. But it, I'm just curious if people would use single portion barbecue dust. Well, I'm just curious. Kind of like know. your nut butters. Have you ever considered larger packaging for those? Because yeah, they're I, always I have. single use. I, I have considered. And I love the single the use. Thing but... with the spout and the whole thing, like five in one. Um, because people who hike, they just want to have one that can open and keep squeezing in their and mouth. And not have to keep opening a new one. And keep opening. Um, anyway. So we've considered that. But, uh, you know, I'll tell you the thing I like. Um. My buddy um, uh, who owns Lanyaps, uh, Louisiana Lanyap in Baton Rouge, mm -hmm. he makes some kind of dust. I don't know if, I, I think it's just local to Louisiana. I don't think yeah. you can it anywhere else. And like you, you know, Ortega puts, Kevin Ortega just puts, you know, good ingredients. That's why he sent right. me some. Right. It's in a clear plastic thing. And it's got on top, you can open either side like it's yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the, the standard the that's the side. standard basic thing that spices come in why won't it's you the, do that is because that, i'm not doing plastic oh yeah and glass is expensive um, no it's not that a, a couple of our co-mans won't do glass because it breaks and the glass gets in the spices hmm. and uh so that's why we came up with the canister but no we're, we're definitely doing packets for taco and dill i'm just curious if people are going to use individual packets for barbecue i see them by the way montreal steak seasoning like all the mccormick's they all do individual packets that so means i'm just people, curious if, if people McCormick's out there is are doing, doing it, it then that's true that means people we're not we're doing the big the bulk guy. packaging in those plastic things because the, the plastic things come in as small as four ounce eight ounce right. 16 ounce 32 ounce you know the big things i am trying to avoid plastics for as long as possible because i don't want plastic in our food so that's where I am with that. No, so I, I get it. I'm just saying yeah. that it, that's what I've noticed. Like, it's Kevin, oh, trust Kevin me, Dunst. that would be much easier if I didn't have this, you know, bug in my butt about plastic. You know who else? And I would never use this product, but I see it at my mom's house because she's Cajun. Yeah. Um, uh, because there's crap in the product. Folks, I'm not endorsing the product I'm talking about right now. Mm -hmm. But Tony Sachery's comes in like, a canister like yours, but it's got, you turn the little top and you can sprinkle it out. Yeah, there is. We found one that has a metal top. It doesn't turn right like that because that you have to have plastic for it to turn. There's a metal oh, top. See. that's almost like a paint tin that you could like put a screwdriver under and like pop up the, 
you know what ah, I mean? Like a, yeah, yeah, but I feel like that's too much. Yeah. I like the Tinker Toys aspect of the one we're doing. But no, uh, I hear you on this. And by the way, the spice category is insanely competitive at the grocery store. So that's why you see the giant thing of McCormick, the giant thing of Moulton Bassett, the giant thing of um, Spicely. And they have their own racks and they take up the whole thing. So every wow. now and then you'll see a few other things crowded over there nobody buys those and so there's no point in us trying to it's so expensive and so much work to get into the grocery stores yeah i want to make sure we get the packaging that people are actually going to buy because then we'll pay all this by the way you have to pay all this money to get on the shelves in grocery stores and then if they take you right off i'll cry i don't need to cry i cry enough just kidding i'm not a crier um so that's that anyway we just did a big co long conversation that we weren't expecting but eat happy kitchen is where i sell that stuff if you guys are interested please check it and, out and by the way folks she also has uh books um eat happy cookbook one and two the two is spelled t-o-o -O. so you can check that out uh with me go get the nsng ebook everyone seems to be loving that get it so just go get it. Don't don't look. Don't mess around. Just go get it. Uh, I'm already hearing from a lot of the the Mike Rowe people. Who oh, good. Have gotten it, um, and they're loving it, right? They're like, "Well, this is all we have to do." It's like, "Yeah, just read this, and this is all you have to do." So, um, go go get that. Um, two, 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 two. We all go to Amazon. Before you go to Amazon, go to vinnytotaries.com. Click through the banner. Uh, look, Amazon gave me my own kind of what do I have, Anna? Like, I'm a big wig, right? Like, I'm a big deal. Yeah, you're a big wig. You're a big they, deal. They, they give me my own page and I have. If, if I go to vinnytortridge.com and I click your Amazon banner, will it tell yeah. me? I, I th yeah, I think I think if you do that. Yeah, oh, here it is. So when you go to vinnytortridge.com, scroll just a hair and then tap the put a little coal on the fire Amazon banner thing. You'll see it on the right. Yeah. And it shows you all it shows you products we use here in the house. Yeah, it looks uh, great. Yeah. So, you know, people go, you it's like, yeah, that axe, that's the axe I have. Oh, oh, oh wait, there's a, a why would you have a Zippo lighter? You don't smoke cigarettes. I keep Zippo lighters because we, we you know, when you go camping, that's the one thing you can always count. He on. needs a fire out there in them woods. Yeah, I don't want to have to sit there and try to rub two twigs together when I can just you know, use my thumb. So you can check out all of that. Um, also follow Vinny on Instagram. Your Instagram is incredible. You put content up there every day, helping people, quote, stay motivated. I keep people motivated. That's so right. go check that out. Uh, so go do it all. Better keep uh, them motivated. I got movies, folks. Go check out the movies. Yeah, movies are good. You know, everybody seems to like my movies, except you know, I like your movies. Vinny. Michael Greger. Um, everyone else seems <laughs> by the know. way, I would love nothing more than to have a standing desk where I could be on a treadmill while we podcast, but I don't want to look like Greg. He looks like it's like, he looks like he's about to fall off. Damn thing. Oh, I'm sure I would too. It would not be yeah. pretty. I'm pretty coordinated, but not that coordinated. Um, but, uh, all right. Uh, let's cut this off because we're gonna play a little music for the kids at home.